Thank you very much. Um, so today I would like to uh, spend the next couple of minutes talking about uh, this guy here, the, uh, the chameleon. Why? Because chameleons are extraordinary uh, animals. Not only do they change color, but they do so very purposefully to adapt to their environment. So this little fella is uh, trying to adapt the colors of uh, a flower he's sitting down. It's very spectacular. Uh, but let's, let's just imagine um, a world um, that is upside down for this, uh, for this little ch chameleon. And let's think about a world where he doesn't adapt to the flower, but the flower adapts to him. And that is really the world of the Internet of Things. At least, that's the promise of the Internet of Things. That all the objects around us are going to adapt themselves to us. They will learn from us, they will learn our behavior, and they will use that behavior to really fit into our lives. And if they do that, that will take away all the friction we have with our environment. And ultimately, the Internet of Things will become the Internet of You. You will be at the center, uh, not the things. Well, that's a great vision, right? But that's uh, not really where we are today. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to install a smart home. It takes an engineering degree. It's a full-time job. It's not really where we are today. And at Sentience, we really want to change that. Um, we really want to be part of, of, of making the Internet of View a reality. And we believe that the answer is in the data. And not just any data. The answer is in the sensor data the data that is emitted from all the sensors that are embedded in the smart devices. Those sensors provide us with a constant stream of information about how people behave and why they behave the way they do. And if you use the right, if you use the right AI and machine learning algorithms, you can extract a lot of knowledge from that data. And that knowledge can be, make the Internet of You a reality. And that's important because all of you, everybody in this room, is part of the Internet of You. You are all building the Internet of You. Um, whether you are building smart home solutions that make homes smarter or safer, well, these homes, they need to learn from how, how, from how the people in these homes behave, right? Whether we are all consuming uh, the content, the fabulous content you're all providing on your platforms, well, as a consumer, I expect to consume that content on my terms. I expect that content to completely fit into my life, into what I'm doing exactly at that moment in time. And I'm obviously also a customer of yours. Well, consumers, um, they've come adjusted to, uh, to companies that, are, that have become very good at fitting in their lives. So as a company, you need to understand your com consumers so you can take away any friction they have um, 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 when, they're, when they're interacting with you. You have to be the chameleon for them, okay? So the Internet of View is a tremendous opportunity for everybody, everybody in this room. So how do we make uh, the Internet of View a reality? Well, I mentioned uh, sensor data. So, so I'm going to just show you very quickly what that data looks like. And here's one sensor. We're all carrying sensors in our pockets, right? Uh, the smartphone has got, has got sensors embedded in them. And what I'm showing you here is basically, if you can, if you can see the three lines on the screen, um, they're the X, Y, and Z axis of the gyroscope um, of the gyroscope in the, in the mobile phone. So if I turn around this phone, those lines will actually change. Well, that is the data we are using at Sentience to really understand who you are. It's really those kinds of data, data, data sources that we use, okay? And then we take that data, um, and uh, we can do a whole bunch of things with that. Let's talk about the mobile phone for just a second, right? So I would know when you wake up in the morning. What is the first thing you do in the morning? You pick up your device and it starts moving. So just based on the movement of the device, I know when you're waking up. I also know when you go to bed, so I have an idea of how long you sleep. Um, I know when you leave the house in the morning, so I've get, I get an idea of how long your morning routine is and when that morning routine is. When you leave the house in the morning, um, our algorithms can actually detect the difference in vibration between walking, driving, uh, being on a bus, being on a bike, so we get mode of transport. Um, we learn pretty quickly where you work and where you live, so we get commuting patterns. So you can see how we can learn a lot about a person just by looking at the movement of this device. So there's a lot of different use cases for this. The world's largest ride-sharing company um, uses our technology today to analyze how their drivers are driving. So are they switching lanes too often? Are they accelerating really quickly and then braking really fast? Are they speeding? And are they using the phone 
while they're driving, which they obviously shouldn't. And so they're using that information to coach their drivers on how to become safer drivers. So that's just one example, but there's a lot of other examples I'm gonna talk to a little bit later. That's the mobile phone, but we can, uh, we can, we can ingest and we do ingest a lot of different uh, sensor data. Uh, sources. Uh, so the second one is body metrics. We can get those from wearables. And why that's important is we can, because we can put those biometrics into context. So we would know whether your heart rate's going up because you're running for the bus or is it because you're working out. Big difference, right? Uh, and then finally, we're doing a lot of work with in-home sensors. So we're analyzing sensors from alarm systems, from smart appliances, smart vacuum cleaners, for example, to really get a good picture of what people are doing in their home so that, again, our clients can use that information to develop products and services that uh, fit much better into their lives. So we take the information from those three sources, and then we create three levels of intelligence. So the first level are what we call events. They're the very baseline events. Are you walking? Are you driving? Are you stationary? Okay. Then we, because we know for every event what happened before the event and after the event, we can put some context around those events. So I know you're driving, but I also know you're driving in the morning from home to work, so that's probably a morning commute. Okay. Or we can detect whether you're dropping off your kids at school. So by really mapping out those moments, um, uh, we can recreate a timeline of a user for every day. And then we aggregate that data to the individual level um, to get segments, right? So we have a whole bunch of segments that we can identify just again by looking mainly at the movement of the mobile device or some of the other sensors I just mentioned. So let's have a quick look at, um, at, at a demo. So Peter um, is going to show you, um, this is demo data from the people that are using our demo app. This is real-time data. There you can see where these users are, which is not that interesting. But if you scroll down to the bottom a little bit, that's where it gets more interesting. So at the horizontal axis there, you can see frequent, home, infrequent, work, biking, car. Those are the moments. It's the middle of that pyramid that I just talked about. Okay, so you can click on frequent, for example, if you want to. Um, and then you can basically select a whole bunch of uh, moments that come straight out of the box. So for example, people that are about to go to a restaurant, let's see. Well, we have a few of them that actually we predict um, are about to go to a restaurant, right? Um, so that's how the moments work. In the vertical axis, if you look at the home column, for example, if you go down, Peter, um, just go down, down. So the screen. Um, so if you look at the home column, the bubbles that are under now, in the middle, those are the people that are actually at home right now. Um, the bubbles that are in the predicted slot, they're the people that we are predicting to be at home. And then at the bottom, you got the people that, are, uh, that were home in the past, okay? So if you click on one of these bubbles, let's click on a random bubble. All right, so here's a person who is at a frequent, he's predicted to be at a frequently visited location, predicted to be at home, um, and they are currently in a car, okay? Um, so that's basically that person's real-time context. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see um, the top of the pyramid. So those are the segments. So immediately you can see this person is an efficient driver, they're a full-time worker, they're loyal to a certain brand, they're a restaurant lover, so we get ide an idea of what their lifestyle is, they have an easy commute, they're a shopaholic. Again, we're detecting all of this just by the movement of the mobile device. We create those segments by literally recreating somebody's history. So if you click on that, and let's take a day like the 2nd of February, for example. Um, I have no idea, or the 3rd, if you insist. Um, um, you can see basically that this person um, was at home um, uh, at uh, f uh, a quarter to one, so had a night out probably, uh, got in their car at 10.20, went to work a little bit late, uh, got in their car again, went to an infrequently visited location, to the car again, went to the supermarket, and then probably got home later in the, later in the evening. So we're re recreating this person's timeline, again, by looking at the movement of the mobile device. Okay, great. So if you can go back to the slides very quickly, so that's how, that's how the platform works. Uh, and I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts here. I think sensor data are a gold mine for all of you. Um, so I think it's really time to start capitalizing on the power of sensor data. Uh, use that data to literally learn how individuals go through their everyday lives and use that information to discover the, the real moments that really matter to them. And if you do that, 
um, you and all of us can make the Internet of View a reality, and we can all stop acting like chameleons. Okay. Thank you very much. Come and see us in the, uh, in the uh, tech stadium if you want to find out more.